the shunting yard algorithm is used to evaluate expressions. In this video, we will learn how it works by going through some simple examples. Firstly, we will introduce the subject and give some background on the algorithm. Next, we will show how to encode the problem differently so it's easier to solve. We then walk through an example of how the algorithm works. And finally, we will build the pseudocode of the same algorithm. Here's a challenge. Can you write a function that takes in a string containing an expression such as this and returning the result of the expression? Unless you already know the technique, it's really difficult to come up with a solution. The shunting yard algorithm does exactly this. Given an expression as the above, it can work out the result. Invented by Edsker Dijkstra in 1961, the algorithm takes its name after the way it operates. Its operation resembles a shunting at a three-way railroad junction. The solution is easier to understand if it's split in two simpler parts. We can first describe the part of this algorithm which re-encodes the expression into a more computer-friendly format. Later, we discuss how to write an easy function to evaluate this format. This particular problem is a clear example that changing the input encoding makes it easier to solve. We are all used to what is known as the infix notation. In this notation, the operator is in between the operands, such as 2 plus 1, or the more complex expression 5 plus 7 in brackets division by 2. In this notation, we have to handle operator precedence. For example, we should calculate the multiplication before a subtraction. This operator precedence makes everything far more complicated to compute. A different notation, called postfix, is far simpler. In this notation, the operator comes after the operands. The result does not depend on the operator precedence, but on the order in which the expression is formulated. Let's see some examples. Here, we have the simplest example. 2 plus 1 becomes 2 1 plus. Notice how the operator is after the operands. Now we have something a bit more complex, where we should first compute the division and then the addition. So we start by doing 7 division by 2. In postfix, this is written by 7 to division. Next, we do the addition, where the result is summed by a 5. When we have brackets, this changes the evaluation order. 5 plus 7 becomes 5, 7 plus, and the result is divided by 2. In the second part of this section, we will describe and implement a function that evaluates postfix expressions. In this and the next video, we will deal on encoding our input from infix to postfix notation. So how can we convert from infix to postfix? This is where the railroad analogy comes in. Imagine we have three ends of a railroad. Let's call them west, east, and south. We connect east with south, south with west, and east with west. Let's start with a simple expression, that of converting 2 plus 1. We start by putting the input expression on the east side. And we start item by item. Let's start with number 2, in this case. And the rule here is that numbers go directly to west, from east to west. So in this case, it goes to west, so we move it. Next is the addition operator. Here the rule is that operators go south, so we move it south. Next on the list is the number 1, and again it's the same rule, numbers go west, so we move it. When we are finished, all we have to do is push whatever is left south to west, in this case just the addition. And we are finished. 2, 1 plus is our postfix result. Let's now pick an example in which we have to deal with operator precedence. Again, we start by placing the input expression on the east side. We start with number 5, and again the rule is the same, we move from east to west. Next on the list is multiplication. Again, the rule here is the same, operators go south. So we move the multiplication sign to south. Next on the list is another number, number 2, the rule is the same, from east to west. We now have to deal with the subtraction operator, and this is where things get slightly more complex. There is an extra rule that needs to be checked before pushing an operator to the south. The rule is that we keep on removing from the south while the operator on top has higher or equal precedence than the one we're dealing with. In this case, the operator on top is multiplication, which has higher precedence than subtraction. So we push it west. 
After this, we can deal with our subtraction and move it south as usual. Next item on the list is again tree, which we move west. And again, after we run out of things on our east side, we push everything from the south to west. In this case, just a subtraction operator. Job done, that's our postfix expression. We will now consider a final example containing parentheses. As usual, we start with our expression on the east side. And as usual, we treat numbers by moving them to the west. Next item is multiplication. We have nothing on the south side, so we just move it south. How do we treat left brackets? We treat a left bracket as if it was a normal operator. So as usual, we push it south. Next item is a number, we move it to the west. What do we do now? That we have a subtraction operator. The rule is that we keep on removing from south while the operator on top has higher precedence. However, on top we have a left bracket. The left bracket is not really an operator. The rule only applies to operators, so in this case we don't remove anything. So the subtraction operator, as usual, moves south. Next on the list is tree. Again, we move it west. Now the right bracket follows a slightly different rule. The rule is to move everything from south to west until you encounter a left bracket. In this case, we move the subtraction operator. Once we're done, we get rid of both parentheses. This is because in postfix expressions, we don't need them. As usual, once our infix string is empty, we move anything that's south to west. In this case, the multiplication. And that's it. That's our finished postfix expression. We can model this mechanism using different data structures. For our input expression, we can put each token in a queue and call it infix. For our output expression, we can also use a queue and call it postfix. For our temporary operator storage, we can use a stack. This is because the operators move out in the reverse order that they came in. After seeing some examples, let's try to write some soda code. Let's call the function to postfix and make it accept our infix expression. We can start with two empty lists, one to hold our postfix expression and another to be our operator stack. In the end, we just return our postfix list. We create a loop which goes through every token found in our infix expression. We process each token, passing the operator stack and the postfix list. We will see this function in the next slide. Once we have processed the entire infix expression, we need to flush the operator stack. To do this, while this stack is not empty, we pop the top of the stack and add the operator to the postfix expression. We now need to implement the process token function. Our input token can meet one of four possible conditions. It can be a number, an operator, a left bracket, or a right bracket. Let's fill in the actions in each case, starting with the easiest one first. If the token is a number, we simply add the number to the postfix list. If the token is an operator, we start a loop that loops while the top of the stack has an operator with a higher precedence than our token. Inside the loop, we keep on removing from the stack and placing it on our postfix list. Once we're done, we push our new operator on top of the stack. The next condition is if we have a left bracket. In this case, we simply push it onto the stack. The final condition is for when we have a right bracket. In this case, we start a loop that continues while the top of the stack does not contain a left bracket. In the loop, we keep on popping our stack and placing the operators on the postfix list. Once we're done, we just need to remove the left bracket. This is done by simply popping the stack one more time. And that's our entire infix to postfix shunting yard algorithm. Sometimes encoding the problem in a different manner makes things a lot easier. In this video, we discussed one such problem. We described both infix and postfix notations and worked through an example on converting from one notation to another. Finally, we presented the algorithm that does the conversion for us.